there will be also lightning talk part tomorrow. So, yeah, we welcome you to join the lightning talk. Uh, the first one will be Christopher Wojcicki, of course, with climate change topic. And I love lightning talks, so you have to forgive me if this is 15 minutes, but I do have permission for it. Um, okay, so today I'll be speaking about climate change. It's not bad just for polar bears. Here we have a graph of CO2 levels uh, based on ice cores over a several thousand year period. It's just taking off, and yet worse yet, every year we're increasing the amount of CO2 um, that we release each year, so the second derivative is positive. Here you can see the total annual greenhouse gases. It's not just CO2, methane is the big one, methane, um, and there's several others. I don't even know what they are. Well, I do know a little bit. You can see that the average global temperature has been going up. The seas absorb most of the increase in the heat. They've only gone up one degree. Over land, on average, it's gone up one and a half degrees. But then you get these extreme weather events, like in India, where it hits 50 degrees centigrade. If there's 100% humidity, people start dying at 35 degrees centigrade. Here you can see that the Arctic sea life over the uh, sea ice over the course of the year since 1979, they've been doing satellite photographs of the sea ice, and the area has been decreasing and the thickness has been decreasing. And if you do a cross section of this at the lowest point of the year, you can see where uh, it's going to hit zero. IPCC says that we have 12 years, but then in 2018. They predicted the upper and lower bounds of the um, ice would be like out 100 years, but the reality is, you know, the ice levels are way ahead of the loss in ice is much worse than IPCC predicted. They're a very conservative organization, and if you actually fit the models to the data, it looks like in a couple of years the ice over the North Pole will be gone. It's not just that it's all going to be black there, and that absorbs more energy. The stuff that terrifies us is this. These are methane bubbles. So you have like the old polar bears who froze and died and sank to the bottom and have been frozen there for a long time. As it warms up, they're melting and the bacteria is getting to them and it's not ordinary bacteria, it's anaerobic bacteria. And they don't release CO2, they release methane. And methane is 30 times more powerful a climate change gas than CO2. So you may have heard of this uh, of the civil war in Syria. So it's starting in about 2000 and um, I think it was about 2005, the drought happened, the farmers weren't able to grow food, one and a half million people moved to the cities. Well guess what? There wasn't any food in the cities either. You had a repressive regime, desperate people, you get a civil, civil war. Um, here we have Cape Town, the amount of water, running out of water. Um, I think they didn't, but they just did. Um, or Harway in Zimbabwe, they just ran out of water. Sao Paulo almost ran out of water. I mean, this year actually, um, Madras, it's now called Chennai, they did run out of water. They expect that next year, six major cities in India will be out of water. That's 600 million people without water. Where are they gonna get water? Bangladesh, downstream, they don't have any water. It all comes from India. Who's got water is Pakistan. 80% of the Hindus goes into Pakistan. It's been an amazingly peaceful arrangement between the two countries when there's not enough water. And you know what else Pakistan has besides a lot of water? Yes. Nuclear bombs, that's right. Particularly with Modi, kind of, that's right. So it was just last December um, that I first read that the rainforest, this is southern Australia, Tasmania, the rainforest in northern Tasmania was burning. Rainforest, you know, you image all these plants with all the water on them, the rainforest is burning. And further south in Tasmania, the smoke was so bad you could see it from space. You can only see it from space. This smoke went 2,000 kilometers to New Zealand. They called out the fire department in New Zealand. Unbelievable. And then last year, I had heard 13 million hectares in Siberia had burned. That's one third the size of Germany. This year, the whole world knows that it was um, 7 million square kilometers of smoke over northern Siberia. All of Europe is only 4.5 million kilometers of smoke. And then we have the whole Amazon burning 3.5 million square kilometers of smoke. 
and evidently Africa had even more. So the glaciers are melting. Um, this is the letter to the lost glacier in Iceland. And it's like the ice cubes, you know? It takes a certain amount of energy to melt an ice cube, but once, you, uh, once it melts, you add that much more energy, and the temperature of the water goes up 20 degrees centigrade. Um, you know, we think it doesn't affect us, but here we have the videos. Respect your privacy. No, that's not the one I wanted. Um, give me just a second here. The next one. Um, okay, so um, there was a video of the disaster in Bermuda. I'm not going to take the time to grab it. There was a mistake there. Uh, it just looks like a war zone, but 70% of Bermuda was underwater, 600 people never seen again, and I mean, just the buildings were destroyed. It's unbelievable. There's supposed to be 100 million climate change refugees this year. You know, Erwan said, you know, I better do something for him, sending 3.5 million of them to Europe. PG&E just last week cut power to 800,000 people in California. I mean, the news just keeps getting worse and worse. So maybe this is the one. Uh, and then S Siberia uh, is now uh, boiling with methane. It's just, you know, so what do you do about it? Well, Ende Gelände in Germany, they had 7,000 people willing to get arrested. They managed to shut down the coal mines just for two days. Pipe in England, they had 1,000 people who did get arrested. The next day, the, par or the next week, the parliament passed a climate emergency. They haven't done anything, but they passed a climate emergency. Canada, pa uh, Scotland, Canada, several other countries have passed it now. And in Canada, there's some court cases where the fact that the government passed climate emergency, it makes a difference. Um, sorry, I'm missing a slide there. So what can you do? First thing is, sell your private airplane. Right? Don't fly. Fire your chauffeur. Don't drive. Um, I don't have the whole list in my memory. Uh, get educated. Uh, there's a lot of censorship on the internet. The climate change videos on my climate change, if you go to Python links on info on climate change, I have some good videos there. They get fewer page views than my Python videos, and there are only a few million Python developers and there are six billion people affected by climate change. So there's huge suppression of information about climate change. There's a lot of, of fake news. The carbon lobby pushes a lot of money so that people have misinformation. It's a huge problem. Um, get educated, get your friends educated, um, get politically active. Thank you very much. of China in your uh, list of solutions, but China is one of the biggest polluters. Yeah, you're right. We should not do anything because everybody else is polluting. Um, I really like the answer of the guy. Why are you attacking me instead no answer? Sorry. I really like the answer of the guy who said, I'm in a boat and the boat is sinking and all I have is a teacup and I can't bail the boat by myself. But I'm going to be able to boat anyhow and give us a few minutes more and maybe somebody else will use a hat and maybe somebody else will find a solution. We all have to do whatever we can. China's a huge problem. Uh, other questions? Thank you. So there used to be a guy, uh, his name is Al Gore, and he's I think a billionaire now. And he made his money uh, basically going around the world telling people that the world was going to end by the year 2001. And well, nothing happened. He's still almost a billionaire. In particular, in 2008, he made um, a movie called An Inconvenient Truth. And in that, he said, you know, we've got a huge problem because pretty soon the World Trade Center is going to be underwater, and everybody laughed at him. And he just made like a second, a second version of that movie, and he actually shows videos of the floods hitting the World Trade Center. So, um, yeah, I don't know where he makes his money. Um, and that's not, you know, you can attack Al Gore. You people attack Greta Thunberg. The question is, is the science correct? Okay, everybody agrees that the science is correct. The scientists say we have a big problem. Um, yes, but nobody 
wants to ask China or India to reduce their consumption? Because they're starving over there. What are you going to do with that? India is an excellent example. Um, Prime Minister Modi came to the Paris conference and he said, listen, we'll do something as soon as our standard of living reaches the rest of the world, right? But it turns out it's the tropical countries that are getting totally nailed. The monsoons in India were so great this year, they quit exporting onions. Uh, the drought in, in um, Australia was so great, they quit exporting wheat, right? So people are starting to run out of, there's starting to be less food in the world. But Modi, India is getting hit hugely. And um, because they're, it's so hot there, the, the, they get 50 degree temperatures, they have thousands of people dying from the temperature. Um, they're actually doing an awful lot with, green, with, um, with alternative energy. I mean, I can't control what they do. All I can control is what I do. And hopefully I can get some of you to be, to be motivated to do something also. Um, China, China has another problem. Um, so these are also hotter countries. China is, is their water is dependent on the, um, what's called the third pole, which is all the glaciers in the Himalayas, and all of those are melting. And when they melt, China's gonna have huge droughts. And uh, you know, as soon as the people in, hung in China go hungry, they topple the government, the government's terrified. And so what they're actually doing is they're, they're making huge furnaces up in the, up in the mountains to send uh, iodide particles up into the sky to seed the clouds. So they're gonna be burning more fossil fuels <laughs> in order to bring rain to China, but you know, everybody's going to suffer. Start and one of them is contributed to Apache Airflow. So, what about data pipelines? Probably in your company you made some solutions with the processing the data and became things get complicated with the time. So, you have a lot of scripts, you have a lot of cron tasks, you have a lot of dependencies, you have a lot of schedules. And this analogy to House of Cards is really good because when something breaks, everything breaks, you know, we have deadlines, we need data. Now, it's, we think sometimes it gets really nasty. So, there is a solution, of course, and one of these solutions is Ergo. There is uh, many, many platforms which handle these tasks, but Ergo is especially good for developers and especially good for Python developers. So what about workflows? So here is the example of the workflow. And this workflow is called extract transform load. So you extract data from multiple sources, transform it for analysis purpose, and load it to another data store. So this is just one example, but you can use it also for machine learning pipelines, for data warehousing, for orchestrating automated testing, for performing job, performing backups and many, many more. So some highlights about the airflow. It's very, very flexible. It's written in pure Python, so it's very easy to add your own functionality, your own uh, plugins or operators. It's very scalable. Scalability is almost infinite, like 10,000 workers, 10,000 tasks, it's not a problem. 
uh, it's programmable, so all workflows are defined in Python, so you don't have to manage XMLs or YAMs, and it gives you the freedom which Python gives you. It's very powerful, you can use Git versioning, so you can collaborate with other people, you can run uh, automated testing, However, setup of Airflow is quite complex, but it's quite easy with uh, Google Composer, which is Airflow as a service. And until now, there is no production Docker image, but our principal engineer, Jarek, is working on it, and it will be published soon. And also, Airflow have a really nice UI. So it's quite simple, a little bit old school, but you can verify check logs, you can rerun the tasks, you will see during the demo how it looks. And it's open source, quite popular, as you can see. It's one of the top level projects, top level projects of Apache Echo, of Apache, sorry, Apache Software Foundation. And uh, there's a list of more than 300 companies which use Apache Airflow. And uh, it shows how usable and scalable Airflow is. On the top left corner is Airbnb. Uh, Airflow was started in Airbnb and was open source in 2016. So I will tell you a few concepts how to build workflow in Airflow. So one of these concepts is DAC, which means directed acyclic graph. And it means it's the graph where it's, where it's impossible to come back to the node. So there is no cycles. When the node was visited, you cannot come back to, the, to this node again. And the uh, directed acyclic graph describes the order and dependencies between the tasks. That doesn't uh, care, like, doesn't do any processing itself. It just handles the correct order and correct time of the tasks in the DAG. So while tasks can be very complicated, it's not the most complicated DAG. I saw graphs where you cannot see these nodes, actually, it's so big. So while that is describing how to how workflow looks, the operators describe the tasks. They are uh, kind of task factories, and there are several types of operators. And one of them is action operator, perform just single action, like creating bucket. And example is also Python operator or bash operator. Another is sensor, which pause the execution until certain criteria are met, like waiting until some file will appear on the bucket. And the last one is the transfer, which enables the transferring data between two services. And how it looks in the code. So basic operator is just a Python class with execute method, which is called when task is executed. And sensor, it's just Python class with the poke method, which is uh, repeatedly uh, called until return true. So, like in this case, it's checking is there a file? No. Is there a file? No. Is there a file? Yes. And workflow can go to the another task. Mm -hmm. Another concept is xcons, which address the problem of the sending data between the tasks. Because, like in this very simple workflow, you get the joke and send mail with this joke, but since architecture of the airflow, the, these two tasks can be performed on totally different machines. So like local storage is, a, is another case to save file and read it from another task. So XCOM, which states for cross communication, is a, just a record in a central database from which operators can read and write to. Usually writing to the XCOM is automatic, but you can do this explicitly, and you have to explicitly pull data from the XCOM. And you will see examples in the demo. And now is the scary part, the demo. Hopefully it will work. So this is how it looks, how it looks. Here is the list of the DAGs available. And I've created a very silly example of the workflow. So what it's get done here, I download three jobs, random Chuck Norris jobs, 
send it one mess send it in one message to Slack channel, and at the end I sent final message with just UTC timestamp to prove it's you know everything is working and it's fine. So I was thinking at the beginning to show you some screenshots of the code, but I can do this actually from the UI of the airflow itself. And it's uh, of course called. So short introduction, what is here? Wait a second. So I will send three jokes. And I've created very simple function to send Slack message, very simple, just a request. So beginning is to you have to describe your own DAG. So you have to put unique DAG ID. Default args is very easy way to apply common parameters to all operators and schedule interval, which is just Chrome expression, and also you can use pre presets built into Airflow. So for this Chrome task, equivalent is at daily. So first task is to get joke task. As you remember, I fetched three jokes, and it's just easy page operator, which use curl command, and push this to xcom. And actually, it's these three tasks are generated in the loop. So you can imagine how much more we can do with the Python. And the relationship between get job task and send task is described exactly in this place. So let's see how loops send jobs tasks. So send, jo send jobs tasks is uh, just a Python operator which calls the Python collator, just function send jobs. And send jobs, here's the important part, xcom. So in loop, it pull data from the xcom from the fetched before um, tasks and just send slug message. So ab what about this relationship? These uh, overloaded bitwise operators means all these three get joke tasks have to finish successfully until the send jokes task can be performed. And another task after send jokes tasks is send final message task, which is again Python operator, which calls the Python collable send final message. Very simple message. So let's see, is it working? Hopefully it will work. So here is the demo Slack channel empty right now and manual trigger of the task. And approximately six seconds you should see some messages. Please work. Yes, it's working. And final message. It's UTC time, so it's two hours shifted because of the time zone. Of course, you can configure it. So what are the other features of the GUI? Unfortunately, it's not very, maybe not very modern UI because you have to refresh it to see the last results. But you can see on the timeline uh, all executions of the workflow, and you can see that during the development I had some problems. So I can check what was the problem. I can see the log of the current of this task and check what happened. And I can see, okay, there was problem probably with internet. Function failed. And other nice feature of the UI is the Gantt chart, which shows the execution of the task. So you can see it looks approximately two seconds for every job and they were run in parallel manner. Set, sending message and sending final message. And uh, that's all. Airflow is, Airflow is really cool and uh, you can check my this code on my GitHub. And at the end I want to invite you to first Airflow meetup which is in Warsaw this Thursday 
odpovědí a dazol. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now please listen to Krzysztof Szyda about Pyszczek. Thank you very much. I haven't prepared any presentation and I probably won't take more than five minutes. Uh, so first uh, we should start with a quick question. Who is here from Szczecin or even heard about Szczecin probably? <laughs> Okay, I, I've seen some people. Uh, I know that it's a very far away place, but uh, recently we have started our community called Pyszczek. Uh, we are also a community partner to this conference, so yes, I'm very happy that we can do actually some pretty good stuff. And we also have some meetups. Uh, yes, we are preparing some meetups. The next meetup will take place uh, on 23rd, that's next week. Uh, so if you are bored or I don't know, maybe lost in Poland and in stretching, uh, then uh, we invite you all to come and participate. And if you don't have such plans for next week or can't go there, uh, then uh, Maybe you can, uh, or you want to uh, have your own presentation on this show, maybe next month. So if you are interested in those uh, things, please uh, try to contact me or approach me on after party, which I definitely will attend this year. Uh, yes, and last thing that I wanted to mention, if you have uh, any questions about trying to organize something like this in your city and you don't have already that, that kind of uh, meetups uh, then please also talk to me or if you are already doing something like that please approach me I would really like to have uh, some uh, more knowledge about organizing some meetups because building community is not an easy thing and we really really love our city and want to have like the best community in Poland, in, in the world, maybe. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> All right. uh, please keep in mind um, that, for, for example, for tomorrow's lightning talks, you don't have to have slides. It's uh, it's not mandatory, right? These guys here uh, today, they were over ambitious. <laughs> uh, all right, um, last thing to say is um, for some of us, uh, the most important part of the conference day, <laughs> the after party, uh, which starts in uh, two hours. And um, Ah, you can stay as long as you want. Um, at 9 p.m. Uh, we have a reservation for a billard, billard table. Uh, don't know the name. Sorry. Uh, this is the address. Uh, write it down. Take a picture. Um, uh, you should definitely appear there. Uh, so see you there. Also, uh, a lot of beer and a drink, not alcoholic drink. Uh, in this place, also, is possibility to board games. Uh, maybe um, someone, no, um, not so keep. <laughs> yeah, board games. Um, welcome. For support, NetGuru, STX Next, EuroPython Community, Codiline, Django, Django Software Foundation, JetBrains, Manic Publishing, 
publications. Uh, our partner is Paikosh, uh, OS World, Pushtech, Microsoft Recommendation, Cameras, Women in Technology, Just Join, IT, Figda, Broadspy, Pi Hub, <laughs> 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 